this video, we're talking about how to find and graph parallel and perpendicular lines. We've been given the equation y equals 2x plus 1, and this is the linear equation. It's the equation of a line, and we we're going to graph this equation, and then we want to find a line that's parallel to this one and a line that's perpendicular to this one and graph those. So here's what that looks like. We're going to start with this equation. It's already in slope-intercept form. Remember that slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope of the line, and b is the y-intercept, meaning the point at which the graph crosses the y-axis. So if we look at our equation, we can see that the form is exactly the same, and we can say that m is equal to 2, so the slope of our line is 2, and that the y-intercept is equal to 1. So with only those two pieces of information, we can go ahead and graph the line. So we start with the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 1. That means we come up here to positive 1 along the y-axis, and we plot a point. Then we say that the slope is 2. The slope is positive 2. Well, to get positive 2, we can either use one of two fractions. We can use 2 over 1, positive 2 over positive 1, or we can use negative 2 over negative 1. Both of these fractions are equal to positive 2. So with this information, we can graph the line. So remember that the slope is change in y over change in x. So when we say positive 2 over positive 1, we mean go in the positive direction of the y-axis, 2 units, and go in the positive direction of the x-axis, 1 unit. So when we use positive 2 over positive 1, we're going to go up 2 along the y-axis and over 1 along the x-axis, up 2 and over 1. We can also use this slope here, negative 2 over negative 1, which means go in the negative direction of the y-axis 2 units, so down 2 along the y-axis, and then go in the negative direction of the x-axis 1 unit. So we're going to go down 2 and over 1 to the left, down 2 and over 1. So you can see our line here starting to form. This is going to be the line y equals 2x plus 1. We'll go ahead and fill that in. So this is the line y equals 2x plus 1. Now we need to find a line that's parallel to this one and then a line that's perpendicular to it. So to find a line that's parallel, the only thing we're really concerned about is the slope. The slope of our original line is equal to 2. Well, the slope of any parallel line is going to be exactly the same. So if I say y equals 2x, I use the same slope, plus 4, then I know that this line is going to be parallel simply because the slopes are the same. I can choose this to be any number. I could say 2x plus 10. I could say 2x minus 7. As long as the slopes are equal to each other, as long as the slopes are both 2 here, then I can say that this line is parallel. So when I graph this line, I know that it's going to be exactly the same. I know it's going to be parallel, except that the y-intercept will be 4 instead of 1. So I say 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I know I can go down 2 and over 1, I can go down 2 and over 1, and down 2 and over 1. Now when I draw in that line, it should look like it's parallel to my original line, and in fact it does. When I sketch it here, it looks like it's parallel to my original line, which means, remember, parallel, that they run exactly at the same angle. They're never going to intersect each other, no matter how far I go out this way or how far I go out this way, they're never going to cross. So those lines are parallel, but what about a perpendicular line? Well, remember we said that parallel lines had to have the same slope. If I want to find a perpendicular line, I want to take the negative reciprocal of the original slope. So let's talk about that for a second. Negative reciprocal, what does that mean? Well, I want to take my original slope, which is 2. So my original slope is 2. If I write this as a fraction, of course I know it's 2 over 1, right? 2 over 1 is the same thing as 2. When I want to take the reciprocal of a fraction, I just flip it upside down. The denominator becomes the numerator, the numerator becomes the denominator. So the reciprocal of 2 over 1 is 1 over 2. I just turn it on its head. Then when I say the negative reciprocal, I just want to take the opposite of this or the negative of this, and so I get negative 1 half. So the negative reciprocal of 2 is negative 1 half. So the slope of my perpendicular line needs to be negative 1 half. So I'll go ahead and say y equals negative 1 half x plus 2. And again, the y-intercept doesn't matter. All that matters is that the slope is the negative reciprocal of the original slope, and if that's true, then I know these lines will be perpendicular. So again, here I can see that my slope is negative 1 half, which I already knew, and my y-intercept is going to be positive 2, just like this one here was positive 4. So I want to start with positive 2, so I'm going to say 1, 2, go up to positive 2 along the y-axis. 
and then my slope is negative one half. Well, keep in mind that there are two ways to write negative one half. I can write it as negative one over positive two, or I can write it as positive one over negative two. Both of these will give me a negative one half. If I use this negative one over positive two, remember I have change in y over change in x. So this tells me go down along the y axis in the negative direction, one unit, then go in the positive direction of the x axis, two units. So that's gonna be right here, down one over two, down one over two like this. If I use positive one over negative two, that means go up in the positive direction of the y-axis one unit, then go in the negative direction of the x-axis two units. So right about here and then up one and over two right about here. And now we can say that the line is taking shape and if we sketch this line in, it's gonna look something like this. Now I know my equation is accurate. If my graph is perfectly accurate, then what should happen is that these lines intersecting each other, these should be at a right angle with one another, a 90 degree angle with one another. And that line I drew that was parallel to my original line, that should also be at a 90 degree or a right angle to my perpendicular line. Because these lines are parallel, they're both gonna be perpendicular to the perpendicular line. And keep in mind here that we can even find a fourth line, we'll call it y equals negative one half x plus zero, so we'll just leave off the plus zero here. So y equals negative one half x. We can even find a fourth line. This one, as you can see, the slope is negative one half, which means it's gonna be parallel to this line that we found here. And both of these are gonna be perpendicular to the first two lines because the slopes are the same here, so these are parallel, but they are the negative reciprocals of these slopes up here, so they're both gonna be perpendicular to these two lines. So if I say my y-intercept is zero, I come here to zero. And then for my slope, I'm going to go down one and over two, down one and over two, like this. Here I'm going to go up one and over two, and I'm going to go up one and over two. And if I sketch my line in, it's going to look something like this. And I haven't done a completely accurate job, but what you can see is that this line is parallel to my y equals negative one half x plus two because the slopes are the same, so they're gonna be parallel. But of course, this line will also be perpendicular to the first two lines in the same way that this third line here was perpendicular to the first two lines. So these two are parallel to each other because their slopes are the same. These two are parallel to each other because their slopes are the same. But the second two lines are perpendicular at right angles or at 90 degrees from the first two lines because the slopes are the negative reciprocals of the original two slopes.